Let me, let me take a few minutes on this particular part of this because this is one of the things we emphasize in our camp. In fact, we have them write down what they want to accomplish. What are their goals? You know, I find a lot of times young learners haven't been challenged in this sense, so here's an opportunity if you haven't to challenge them in this area. What are your goals? Now, the way we would do it, we do it in camp, and the way Coach Timmons would do it, wasn't just a simple throw a dart at the wall and say that's a goal. But we would have daily goals in terms of training. And then we'd have weekly racing goals. And then we'd have seasonal goals. And so whenever I went into a meet, for example, the first meet, I didn't know what we were going to run, and I don't remember exactly the conversation I had with Coach Timmons. By the time we got to the second meet, we had a plan at that point. Because at that point, I'm starting to realize there's something there. So the goal for the second meet was to beat the guy in the red and white jersey. <laughs> we weren't really concerned about time at that point. But once I got past him, then we started talking about time. Fourth race, this is what Ken was alluding to. We're in Kansas City. We're riding the school bus back to Wichita. It's about a three-hour bus ride. Now picture, if you will, in your own mind, an old rickety yellow school bus. No TV. No headsets. You had nothing to do with leaning against your buddy in sleep, or in those days we had honey bear jars or whatever, and that was just kind of it. That's all we did until we got back to school. But Coach Timmons took that opportunity, empty seat, like up here in the front of the bus, and it would invite each of the athletes to work through the buses, or a couple of them, because we had all those guys out for the team. And he'd sit us down and he said, this is how it began with me. He said, now Jim, you've run a really good race. When you have as many people out for the track team as Coach Timmons had, the fact that he knew my name was a good step forward. <laughs> I'm going to step on some toes. If I do, that's okay, but you'll understand where I'm going with this. One of the things that's been most detrimental to our middle distance runners is the ability for the high school runner to double and triple. It may help your points, but it doesn't help them because they aren't strong enough to be able to really do that well and to get to that point where they're going to dream big and run fast. In high school in Kansas, run a mile. Guess what? Couldn't run anything longer. It had to be a quarter mile or less if you've been recycled race. The year they started putting in where you could double, nationally you could see the times had sort of nose died because the kids were running tired. They never got a chance really to run their best race. So, and I know you all have different strategies here. Give them an occasional time where they only have one race to run. Give them that opportunity to see just exactly what they can do because when they're doubling and tripling, it helps your team points but it doesn't help them in their development. And when they get to college, that's a whole different story. You're stronger, it's expected of you. But in Kansas then, in fact, it was really funny, our, our state meet, we had sprint medley relay. So sprint medley relay, I ran the half mile. It was on the Friday before the Saturday that I ran 358. Okay, so the day before, I ran 150, I think it was, and a half. And you couldn't change the personnel on the team. You could change their position. So we had a guy that was a quarter miler that became the half miler. And I became the half miler that was going down to run a 200. After I finished running 358 in state meet. So, you know, you still only had that special time in Kansas if you ran a mile. It had to be less than a quarter mile for a, a double up. And so that's why I encourage you to give your athletes a break now and then. Give them an opportunity to kind of get that camel's nose under the tent and just peek at what's out there, how fast they can possibly run. Prepare them mentally, because all of a sudden, if they're running one race, they're going to feel really light in their legs. They're going to find this is a whole different ballgame. 